Oh, hey YouTube, how's it going? I just got home from work. It is what Monday evening. Um, how you doing? Uh, I have nothing of importance to say in this video at all, apart from well, that's not even really important, is it? But um, apart from that, the reason that the video, the last video, is gone, um, and the reason that probably the rest of the videos made since splitting up with my ex-boyfriend are going to be gone, um, is that the guy. F in question in the last video found out about my blog because I linked like a piece of writing that I did on Facebook and he went through that and watched the videos and like oh that's gonna hurt like I say the worst things about <laughs> I say the worst things about him in some of those videos like before it happened I, I say things like you know I just wouldn't normally even consider it and blah 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 so um, that wasn't very cool um, for him, um, but he's a really private person. He doesn't appreciate like people being able to get through my Facebook page that we both know to find out about him, which is fair enough. Um, my ex-boyfriend's the same. My best friend Dad is also the same. Um, so I'm going to take down those videos, and then I'm going to take down the really despairing, sad videos from before that because I have a date, ha ha, and he also has access to my blog through Facebook now. Um, and uh, I, whilst I don't intend to get into a, like a serious relationship with the guy yet, um, I, d I don't need him before we've even had our first date, like watching me weeping over my ex-boyfriend less than, what, three or four weeks ago. So those videos are all going. Um, but you've all seen them, right? Like, I'm, I, I just want, uh, although I can't mention it in the video anymore, I want you to know that it's not because I'm ashamed of doing it and you all know it and at least 600 people saw that video. Um, and you can all use your memories to remember that about me and judge me if you wish, I don't care. Um, cool, so that's that. Uh, yeah, I have nothing to talk about. I'm just a bit lonely on a Monday night and I thought I'd have a chat with you because I'm in a fucking good mood. Um, which is really good, isn't it? Like, isn't it great when you have like a really long period of... I'm going to make a Bloody Mary as well. You can watch if you like. Here, I'll show you how to make a Bloody Mary. Um, but firstly, isn't it... <laughs> Look at my cat's both watching me, hold on. Hello. Soon. <laughs> Soon. That is the caption. Um, yeah, okay, wow, I'm probably an extreme close-up now. I'm going to zoom back out. Um, yeah, so isn't it great when you have like a period of depression and feel really shit and then good shit starts happening? Because it makes, oh my god, it makes those sweet times so much sweeter. So whilst I've, like, like I clearly haven't learned my lesson because I'm going to tell you about... In fact, let me show you how to make a Bloody Mary first. And uh, if you don't give a fuck, I may even, if I'm really kind to you, I may put a caption up. Nah, fuck it, you can just skip forward a bit if you don't care. Um, either because you know how to or just hate Bloody Marys. Fair enough, but I think I've got this down to quite a fine art at this point. Right. So. Are you going to be able to see that? Hmm. Okay. So, a Bloody Mary. Amazing fucking beverage, love this. I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling quite retro with my gin and tonics and my Bloody Marys recently. I'm quite enjoying myself. I'm still drinking like fucking way too much. I feel embarrassed to go to, uh, I feel embarrassed to go to this therapist on Tuesdays and like report back how my week's been recently. Cause it's like, yeah, um, binge drinking, casual sex. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, none of it makes me look particularly good. Can you see that? Yes, you can. All right, take the lemon wedge that you have just newly cut and just like drizzle around the rim of the glass, right? Whack it in there. Bish bash bosh, that was quite Jamie Oliver. Does anyone in America even know who Jamie? Oh yeah, he's that prick that tried to teach you how to eat healthily a few, few years ago. What else do we need? We need a plate, salt and pepper, No use being in the middle like that. Take your lemony, rimmy glass and like swirl it around in there for a little while until you end up with a nice, pretty salt and pepper coating around the rim of your glass. My local barmaid does that. I love that she does that. I'm a little bit in love with my local barmaid, even though I don't really fancy her just because she makes such an amazing... Um, yeah, I realise that I have a problem with drinking as well because <laughs> I now know like the, the favoured nail polish of my local barmaid. Oh shit, I'm recycling loads of quips here, aren't I? If you actually bother to um, put the lemon in, if 
you actually bother to follow me on Twitter if you're that masochistic and you'd like to hear from me 15 times a day, uh, you'll have heard a lot of this shit already, sorry about that. Um, I just fancy chirping, chirping on about myself for a little while. So, ice, a good handful of ice, a couple of shots of vodka. You probably do want to do it with double. Don't you love how vodka does that, like, weird, takes on that weird viscosity when you freeze it? It doesn't actually freeze. Uh, that's that bit. What else here? Celery salt. Hmm. Don't know where that lives. So yeah, on, um, no, maybe I shouldn't start, I think it's if I start talking, I'm just going to keep interrupting myself, so maybe I should just make this fucking cocktail as fast as possible now that I seem to be doing a how-to video. Good dash of celery salt. You want Liam Perrins. Do you get that in America, Liam Perrins? I don't know. I hope you do. If you're a vegetarian, I suppose you could maybe use, like, Vegemite. You want a good dash of Liam Perrins. An even better dash of Tabasco. I fucking love Tabasco. I have that on everything. Yeah, check it out. Probably a bit more. I like it spicy. And what else? What am I missing? Don't think I'm missing anything. Tomato juice. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. Also, you can like kid yourself into thinking that you're actually getting some calories. Uh, you're getting some vitamins even. I know I'm getting some fucking calories. My, my my midriff, which I never knew to be proud of until I lost it, has now fucking gone all like soft around the edges and it kind of pisses me off because for all those years I had such a like flat midriff but when I was a smoker, never appreciated it. Now I've got a bit soft around the edges and I think back to those days and go, oh my god, will I ever see that midriff again? Especially when you're having sex with people you don't know that well. Like you, you feel more self-conscious. That should be pretty fucking amazing but I'll just whoa that's a lot of Tabasco fuck yeah that's really good I'm gonna just add a bit more tomato juice so that I'm not just coughing through the whole video shit am I still wobbling on about my cocktail I think I am this must stop right now okay hi um so yeah I've learned a valuable life lesson recently, which is like, if you sit around waiting for other people to fucking do stuff with you, you may have like one or two good occasions every... Mm, that's good. My cat's talking to me. What, Tabs? Talk to YouTube. What's up? What's up? She's not playing. Totally not playing. Mmm. That's good. Yes, I hadn't had a Bloody Mary for like three years and my friend mentioned it on Facebook. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, Bloody Mary. Should I just hold you? Shaky cam. Um, why am I here? What am I doing? Yeah, so I, I learned a valuable life lesson recently. This is the most waffly video ever, isn't it? I learned a valuable life lesson recently, which is like, you don't wait for other people to want to do shit. You just go and do it. Because every time that I've gone out to actually do something on my own that I find a little bit scary, I've ended up having a like really good adventure. By way of example, last week I went out to a thing. There's a website called meetup.com, right? And you can join all these different groups. I joined one called um, Single Girls Meetup or something. Um, and long term viewers of my channel will remember my distaste for the phrase girl when relating to a woman but I suppose this is one of those contexts where you just have to let it slide um, and it was in this skyscraper in like a banking district of London really swanky and everything and I, I went along and I bought myself a couple of glasses of Prosecco but I just could not find these women anywhere I couldn't spot them and they didn't give me any distinguishing features or a phone number or anything um, so I got like, at that point it was a bit of a shit night and I was thinking, this is what I, because it was the first time I tried to go out on my own and do something and meet other people. Mmm. That's good. Um. Yeah. Um, and it was a bit shit. So then I thought, well, fuck it, like, okay, like, the banking district was never going to be, I was the only woman in the bar not wearing a suit, so I just thought, well, fuck it, the banking district is no place to meet people I probably really want to know anyway. 
Um, so I relocated to Camden Town. Anyone that's familiar with London knows Camden Town is a bit more of a kind of indie, I suppose like Portland-esque place rather than uh, like uh, the Washington, which is the um, banking district. DC, that is. Um, so yeah, relocated to Camden Town and um, chatted to the DJ there for a while in a cocktail bar. That was kind of nice, but that didn't go anywhere. My friend, um, Cubano of Fuego, who, like, I suppose feminist viewers might remember from way back, um, showed up and drank martinis with me for a while. That was really fun. And um, so it ended up being, like, an impromptu night hanging out with a YouTube friend, which is really cool. And I would not have got there without going out to the horrifying thing on my own first. I'm happening to post on Facebook that I was hanging around in a bar in Camden Town. And he was too. Um, so that was fun. Uh, how did I... Yeah, the next night I went to um, an art house cinema and I saw uh, Monsieur Lazar, which is a French, well, a French-Canadian film about an Algerian school teacher, subtitled. And I went to an art house cinema to see it. And I drank a few glasses of wine on my own and um, one thing led to another and I ended up going up to, which was really nice actually, that was kind of like, I didn't intend to go out and get wasted that night actually, that was a kind of, I was doing a civilised thing. I was like, well, you know, I like art house cinema, my ex-boyfriend never liked that. Mm. My ex-boyfriend didn't really like, he found, um, I was always trying to get him to go to this particular art house cinema because it's really cool and you can have a glass of wine with your film and when you buy popcorn it comes in a little like candy striped paper bag and stuff it just feels like I'd much rather give my money to them than you know the fucking Odeon or View Cinema or whatever and it just has more of an atmosphere and um, everyone else tends to be like middle aged couples and elderly people and stuff so they tend to shut the fuck up during the film which really is like a pet hate of mine when people talk during films, it probably is of everyone isn't it, apart from those fuckers that are actually talking um, anyway Monsieur Lazar is a nice film, I recommend it um, I'd give it 4 out of 5 stars probably can't really be bothered to give the full review. Um, mm, that was good. Um, so then loaded up on my two or three glasses of wine that I had with my film in the viewing itself. I went up to a pub and uh, they were having a deal on champagne. So I had a couple of glasses of champagne to go with my two or three glasses of red wine. I, I A live band came on. So I ended up dancing with these these women on the dance floor. Um uh, yeah, and they were really nice, and I was just having fun dancing with them, but I happened to mention that I quite fancied the bassist in the band, and then the gig happened to come to an end at that point, and they were like, oh, go talk to him, go talk to him, and I was a little bit wasted by this point, so I did, and he was actually really nice and welcoming and, like, um, forthcoming and very good company and very funny and good looking, so I was like, huh, like, I was really drunk, though, at one point, I, like, did actually launch myself at him, um, and kind of gave him a bit of a kiss without him really having... He seemed pleased about it, but, um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I was quite embarrassed about it. And when I woke up on Saturday the next morning, A, I thought... I, I was hoping he would text me so that I could apologise about launching myself at him like that. But also, um, I, could, I didn't think he would text me because I thought I was too drunk to give him my phone number at that point or I would have got it wrong or whatever. But yeah, she did. Actually did text me. Fuck it, stranger things have happened. Uh, and it turns out he's a really nice guy and he's taking me for a date this week. Not sure yet what. But this essentially means that I now have a kind of ongoing casual arrangement with the guy in question that we no longer mention in videos. Um, you, you're you going to... Anyone that's bothered to watch the video to this point is going to want to know whether or not it's because he doesn't want my ex-boyfriend to know. But it's not at all. It's it's not. It's the guy's just he, he has a like professional reputation to uphold, and he's more he cares more about his how he's seen socially than I do. Um, because I really don't give a fuck as long as I'm having fun, uh, or speaking my mind, whichever comes to the forefront. Where am I in this story? So now we have a date. Like a nice guy date, a kind of like probably won't try to get into my pants till the third or fourth date type of guy. As well as the casual arrangement. Which is nice. Because it means if one doesn't work out, there's always the backup. And I wouldn't mind actually kind of like um I went when I went to see Cubano Afuego, one of his friends was kind of like giving me these lingering hugs and I was thinking, you're quite nice. So 
turns out like the best cure for being di- like I I'm I really do think there's a very I do get why some people are judging me quite so harshly but I do think there's quite a fine line between kind of like being really desperate and kind of enjoying singleness um and that's why I was embarrassed when I woke up the next day and realized that I'd launched myself at that guy at the basis because I thought that's kind of verging on the desperate side of things but there's also like no better cure for being dumped than like having the attentions of other men and being pursued or people preferably I'd like to find some women to have said arrangement with as well um in fact that almost feels more pressing because I keep getting into relationships with guy after guy um and I never really get to explore that side of things a couple of trysts at university but um yeah, I'm much more interested actually in meeting women at the moment. There's a uh, there's a group in London uh, for poly women. They call themselves Polly, and I thought I might go along to that. Can't be a bad place to start. So, what am I talking about? Yeah, I think there is a fine line between, you know, uh, desperate and reveling in your singleness, and I'm definitely on the happy side of reveling in my singleness. The only thing that I really feel you could judge me for and I can say anything to is how much I'm drinking right now. But one thing at a time. So I'm, I'm seeing this cognitive behavioural therapist and we set these goals after every session and my goals for this week were to um, write something and uh, because he knows that I want to write creatively and because I want to do performance poetry and stuff so he said, well, you know, first thing to do there is write. I'm supposed to be trying to make more eye contact with people because I, I never make eye contact with people when I talk to them because I'm shy. Pardon me. And what was the third thing? I'm obviously doing really well with the third goal because I don't fucking remember that at all. But on Sunday, I had a bit of a breakthrough moment and I just kind of like, I was sitting there thinking, I've got 18 days until this prize, this short story competition called the Bridport Prize that I really want to enter something for. And I've got a few ideas and I just need to turn off the television and actually do it. And it took me six hours and I did sit there like staring at the laptop until my forehead felt like it was bleeding because I was just trying so fucking hard to make something, squeeze some grain of something from my fucking mind. Um, Which isn't, it's, uh, as soon as I start thinking about writing I get scared that I'm, uh, I think it's because this really is like my major dream and so it takes a lot of courage to kind of embark on it. Because I, because I have no tolerance for my own shit writing, but I really think that's the skill of writing, isn't it? It's like learning to tolerate your own bullshit for long enough to be able to come up with some bare bones that you can then edit. Um, yeah. So actually, I ended up writing over a thousand words. Um, I've got about five thousand word limit, so I'll probably go for four thousand five hundred. So getting my first thousand words down was quite a good achievement, I think. And actually, if you're interested, the first paragraph's on my blog, I'll link it below. And do follow me on Twitter, because I'm, like, since I split up with my ex, I've been, like, really, really addicted to things like Facebook and Twitter, and and to a lesser extent YouTube, but obviously, clearly, I've been quite forthcoming with YouTube as well. Um, Just keep, I just keep, I just, it just feels good to be having conversations with people and making arrangements with people and making friends with people um, right now. Um, and that's really all I can do, isn't it? It's, you know, if you get dumped and you find that you really have no mates and no nothing, the best thing to do is to go out, meet new people, build up some of your old contacts and um, get some new friends in. And um, that's cool. Actually, that's quite freeing because there are a lot of fucking arseholes from university that I can now remove off my Facebook page. And, like, I don't need to know those people anymore because I only knew them because of my ex-boyfriend and now I just don't need to know them anymore. So... There's something quite liberating about all of this. Where's that amazing bloody Mary gone? Mm. Mm. That I've just got spot on. Mm. I still can't knock out the perfect bloody Mary every time. Mm. That's great. Um... So sorry, I'm just I am just twittering at you, aren't I? I just don't like I don't I don't want to do I don't want to do YouTube like I used to do YouTube anymore. I don't when 
I first encountered YouTube, I was like, yes, a fucking haven for intellectuals where people are actually interested in discussing issues and politics and, you know, getting, you know, as a, as a kind of Marxist socialist, it really appealed to me um, to get, like, you know, the working class talking to each other and all that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, I no longer have an interest in any of that, mainly because, like, the average fucking mental age of a person on YouTube is, like, so minimal that, so low and people are so you just end up you just end up clarifying and justifying the most readily accepted facts in the ad academic community or um or or it, it comes down to a matter of opinion which is obviously fine and good but ends up becoming just a horrible personal attack on you and i'm just not here for your i'm not here for your views on me i'm here to express myself to get to know myself better by talking to a camera and yes, to, to have the support of a community as well, which I feel I do have, and I appreciate I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and comment. Um, and as a happy byproduct, like occasionally I do feel like I've helped someone by talking about something on YouTube. I believe that certain videos, such as me talking about mental units and depression, and me talking about um, ptosis, which is the eye condition I have, um, and yeah, to a lesser extent, some of the like feminist videos have like helped give voice to things that people have wanted said and haven't possibly had the kind of courage to say themselves or just have no desire to really be on YouTube but like to hear other people talk about. But nowadays, really, I'm just chatting to you. I just like you're just like my mates, but I never have to ask how you are. Mm. Um, although I am, of course, interested in, in how you are. And I don't think it can hurt me right now to kind of big myself up by saying, you know, saying to myself, I'm interesting enough to listen to. I'm attractive enough that people want to take me on dates and have sex with me. And um, fuck him, his loss. Um, and that is a fucking good feeling because, oh my God, I did not want to have to sit with that. Like, uh, yeah, the, the only guy in my life and the only guy whose opinion I respect is like, just decided that he no longer wants me in his life and doesn't love me anymore. That was not a good feeling. For the short period that it lasted, that was fucking horrible. That feels so much better to be, like, having fun and doing good stuff. And every every so often, like, I don't know if anyone else has gone through a recent breakup, but every so often you'll just have, like, little flashes of, like, moments of, like, hey, I was, I was never able to do this before, you know. Well, not that I wasn't able to, but just I always had a sense that I couldn't do it freely because he was judging me when I was doing it. You know, like, um, sitting and crying on YouTube or something like that. And now it's like, you know, I, I don't give a, I absolutely do not give a fuck what anyone thinks about my life. I'm just here to talk about it. Um, and it comes back to that old, that old problem, isn't it, with making YouTube videos where people assume that because you are talking about your life on YouTube, you are saying, I'm a perfect person, I'm a role model, you want to be like me? And I'm not at all, I'm reveling in my own imperfection, that's very clear. Don't think that just because I tell you about something means that I think you should do it too, or it's the way that everyone should do something. I don't give a crap what you do. I'm interested in hearing about what you do, but I don't care, ultimately, about judging you, I don't give a fuck. Mm. And I've met some really good friends through YouTube now. Mm. And you should come and join me on Twitter if you're on Twitter because I have good I'm having good japes with people during the day. Since I downloaded um the Twitter app onto my mobile phone, you are effectively having a direct line to me. So come and chat to me, I'm nice. Mm. Mm. My god, that's good. Yum. It's the salt and pepper around the rim that just makes that particularly devilish. And that lemony tea. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I like that a lot. Does anyone else know any good cocktails? In fact, can someone make me a video response? No one's watching at this point, are they? Hang on a sec. 24 fucking minutes, Jess. This has become, become, this has continued to be just as uh, self-indulgent as it ever was at the beginning of the video. But, uh, 24 minutes, really, Jess, okay. Mmm. Are you talking to me, Tabs? Are you saying I want my dinner? I want my dinner. Mmm. Don't know what I'm doing in here, really. Mmm. I must stop licking the glass in front of people. Mmm. <laughs> we had really nice weather in Britain over the weekend. 
which has been really nice because it's been a fucking shit May so far, really crappy weather. Uh, it's nice to get some sunshine. I feel like, oh my god, like, seasonal defective disorder is a horrible, horrible thing to have. Like, in the winter months, I just, like, every fucking year I hit a suicidal patch. It's not cool at all. Knowing that it's coming is the worst thing because obviously the more years that you have this, this disorder, the more you know it's coming. And obviously, of course, that means you can take steps like taking St. John's water and using a single effect to disorder lamp and trying to get out in the sunshine every day for at least 10 minutes with some skin on show and that sort of stuff. You can take steps, but really doesn't... It, it keeps you alive and it keeps you not, like, self-harming or something, but it doesn't make your life enjoyable in any way um, over the winter. But the, the flip side of that is you felt so shit all winter that when you get those sunny days, you're like... Bang! Yes, summer is here. Let's go and fucking have fun. Like almost, it's almost like bipolar depression, but only comes around every six months. I feel like just so fucking on top of top of the world, um, and it's very. I, I almost wonder if my ex boyfriend considered that when he split up with me. That it was fairly kind of him to split up with me in the early part of April, which was like gave me a good six months ahead of good good feeling. Um, rather than dumping me as many a boyfriend has in uh, December. I say many. I've been dumped four times by people that I actually cared about. Mm. I hardly ever split out with any of my boyfriends. I split out with Dan, who's my best friend of 10 years, because I just felt really bad, because he was like the nicest guy in the world and the nicest best boyfriend I'd ever had, and yet just didn't. I just didn't feel any chemistry with him or feel passionately in love with him in any way. Mm. That was pretty fucking horrible. It's not fun being the person that dumps someone. You feel guilty about it and shit, but it's much worse to lose someone you desperately want to keep, someone you desperately love. Um, and that's part of the problem, isn't it? Desperately loving someone. I think, like, I I, I just... I was just so codependent. I didn't realise it until it was too late and he was gone. And I smothered it to death. Mm. Really, what I needed to do to get his attention was not like write him more love letters or you know try harder and make him nicer meals and or you know do nice things for his mates what I needed to do to get his attention was start going out with the girls or whoever you know start going out with other people and leaving him sitting at home on a Friday night wondering what I'm getting up to because that's where you essentially feel like there's someone that you want to keep in your life I just didn't realize that at the time it really is true with men I just don't understand this the reason that I was always like that right before was that I thought that you would want like as a man you would want what I want out of a relationship which is like to feel treasured and loved and I thought like as he pulls away what he's trying to tell you is you're not making me feel treasured and loved so that I'd really try to make him feel treasured and loved but that whole treat and mean keep him keen thing with men is actually true what's with that um yeah the more you like leave long gaps between b replying to some guy's text messages and like the more uninterested you seem the more they want you and i get the unobtainable thing because i kind of like always fancy guys that seem in some way unobtainable which i'm steadily increasingly in recent years recognizing as being emotionally unavailable rather than uh, unobtainable in some cool sense but i've learned that lesson this time around anyway especially um Oh, I don't remember what the beginning of that sentence was. Oh, well. Mm. Ow, my lips are fucking burning. It is amazing having that salt and pepper around the edge of the glass, but um, when you've got as much Tabasco as I do, it's like... Oh, I'm really hungry as well. I don't feel like it's like... I might be able to get away with making a Bloody Mary, but... No, wait, why am I still talking on YouTube? Sorry, sorry. Wait, I still haven't said anything interesting, have I? Sorry. No, I'm not even going to try and come up with anything interesting. I did warn you at the beginning of the video that I was just going to chat for half an hour on some shit. And that I have done. So I have delivered on my promise to you, YouTube. Um, yeah, status report, much better. Thank you for asking. And um, well, thank you for clicking on the video, ergo uh, implying your, import, your interest. And, uh, and that's why all of those videos are going. I... I there are going to be people that say that it's because I was ashamed of the videos and I didn't want anyone knowing about it and I realised my mistake and what a dirty whore I am and um, got embarrassed about it and that's just not the case at all. Uh, you know me, YouTube. 
well, I mean, the people that I give a fuck about their opinions, they know what I'm like and they know that I will just tell you who I am and what I'm like. And it, I always see it as a shortcoming in myself. It makes it difficult to make friends when you're as fucking honest about your shortcomings as I am. But I'm just not, I'm trying to, it feels like the wrong thing to do to pretend I'm something I'm not because what I'm trying to do is learn to love myself more and accept myself more. And I'm not going to do that by pretending to be something else. I might get more friends that might make me feel accepted by other people, but I'm not going to love myself more by pretending to be something I'm not. So you're just going to have to take my word for it that that's not why these videos are coming down. They're coming down because, well, the first lot of videos, the recent videos are coming down because the man in question does not appreciate people that we both know being able to access them. And the earlier videos, the weepy ones are coming down because I now have a date with quite a nice guy and uh, I don't need him knowing that much about my recent grief before I had a chance to make a good, happy impression on him. Ooh, he's quite hot though, YouTube, seriously. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, mm, yum. He's a really good bassist. Like that's definitely hot, isn't it? Musical talent. Any any kind of talent, actually. Having something that you're good at and that you love. And he actually does it. He makes a living out of it. Between, like, gigging, teaching lessons and working at some music school. Like, he makes a living out of it. I'm, I'm impressed. Like, that's what I want to do with my life. Do something that I love for a living. With my next girl. Uh, hence the short story that I'm writing. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I've got a whole fuck ton of... Um, right. Fuck ton. Is that a... Is that a literary phrase? Um, oh, wow, that looks so beautiful. I don't know if you can... Mm. No, that's not translating onto camera whatsoever. Nope. Fucking flip cam. It can't do changes in light. Um, that's a shame because that looks so great. Like, the the sun coming through the red leaves looks amazing. Um, I've got a whole shit ton of writing on um, my blog if you're interested in it and I'm not very good at self-promotion but I am increasingly trying to get into self-promotion um, because you have to, don't you? And um, thank you for listening, YouTube. And no, I did, uh, no, if you've made it to this point in the video, I very much do care how you are so do let me know down below in comments. And if you make videos, let me know as well because I'd like to follow other people. Follow, I've been on Twitter for too long. I'd like to sub other people that I recognise the names of and know what the fuck's going on in their life. And if you know how to make a good cocktail, make me a video response showing me how to make said cocktail. Especially, like, more vintage type ones. I'd quite like to know how to make an old-fashioned. And apparently it's the barman says that it's quite an intricate one. So show me how to make an old-fashioned if you know how. And, um... Yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll eventually get on blog TV as well. Me and uh, Stan Marsh won. We were both saying, oh, we're, we, we want to be on blog TV, but we're too shy. So I said, why don't we do, we should do some dry runs with just the two of us and no audience members have these little debates on, on blog TV. So that could be a thing which is happening. Okay, it's been fun. Thank you. I feel like I've got that off my chest now. I can chill out for the evening and wait for the uh, internet shopping to be delivered so I can actually eat something, which would be nice. I'll leave you with my cat. Have a good day. What are you doing? <laughs> well, this is fascinating. Okay, see you, bye.